Hello, ECE240, and welcome to week 11, chapter 10, emotional development um, for our class. Before we get into emotional development, um, I want to go back to last week on early literacy, and I want to thank all of you for picking out some wonderful um, children's books that um, are critical to brain development. And one of the things that we can really support um, brain development and just overall development is by just taking a book and reading to our children, reading age-appropriate material, expanding vocabularies, comprehension. These skills really allow for um, individuals to be successful. One of the most easiest ways that we can do that is simply by reading to our children. We don't have to buy and purchase all these books. We can um, go to the libraries. There's so much content online as well of, of free books that we can download and interact with our children. Um, but I, I hope you saw the importance of last week. And um, one of the weeks that I really enjoy the most um, is our literacy week and, and the kind of language development. Um, but talking about that behavior change, and I always talk to you guys about um, through this semester, um, I'm going to pinpoint situations and opportunities that you have to change your life and change the lives of others. And it's with that one simple thing of just reading every single night um, to children that can make the biggest difference um, for our little ones. Um, as you guys know, I have three little ones. Uh, my oldest is four, my youngest are two, and that's one of the things I love the most is picking up a book, reading to them every single night, um, teaching them new words, give them new experiences, um, and really give them a whole new world, giving them new environments to explore in, um, giving them new opportunities to have different perspectives, Books open up so much, um, but it's just not about books. Um, it's also about how we talk to our children. Are we using um, full sentences? Are we using um, robust words with our children? Or are we just using slang and, and direct um, language? Um, there's three critical things that we can do to support language development early literacy. It's um, really talking to our children um, with high vocabulary, complete sentences. Um, two, yes, reading to our children. That was all about last week. But number three is singing to our children. Um, it's a wonderful way, those nursery rhymes like Itsy Bitsy Spider, um, Bingo, um, Old MacDonald Had a Farm. Um, there's a lot of different songs that we can um, sing to our children, um, incorporate with our children. Um, and one other thing that I think is really important as well is playing with our children. And while we're playing with our children, that we're having these um, conversations that have feedback loops that go back and forth. Um, and, and we're talking about um, different things, allowing children to um, speak their mind. And, and while they're doing that, introducing new vocabulary. Um, and here's the interesting thing. Here's a connection that I think happens from last week um, to this week. When you open the folder on emotional development, um, the first video, I have some videos that I want you guys to um, check out in the video um, folder. And I, what I kind of done is put these videos in order. Um, and it's interesting because I don't know if many families in our community understand the importance of early literacy, right? Understand that a child's vocabulary size at three years of age um, is a strong predictor of what their third grade literacy scores um, will be in elementary school. So the higher the vocabulary size, the stronger um, their um, literacy scores will be when they're in elementary school. Um, how do we bring awareness to this um, to allow more families to know about the importance of early literacy? Well, the first video I have, it's kind of a fun video to watch, but here is this pediatrician, um, Dr. Q, who promotes literacy through a program called Reach Out and Read. And he's out in Rhode Island. He's a real pediatrician. And he made this music video to spread awareness, to connect community leaders, um, to share the importance of reading to our children every day. 
Um, I want you to watch that and, and imagine if we had these types of pediatricians um, in our community and our leaders that were sharing this importance of early literacy. Um, these are things that you can do, 100%. We don't, we don't have to be a doctor. We don't have to be a pediatrician. But now that you have this knowledge, more importantly, my challenge to you is, how are you going to take this knowledge around the importance of early literacy and share it to your family, to your community, those that you interact with? So this video is just like a, a fun video to watch that makes a strong connection um, to last week. And then I think about how sitting up, sitting down with a child interacting with the book starts to build memories, starts to build connections. Um, and it's funny how that can even set up, and this is the topic of our week, social emotional development. And this is so critical um, to a child's um, development, um, is how they identify with feelings, how they express feelings, um, how they interact with others in the world, um, if it's peers, if it's adults, um, so much of our success in the workforce, everyday living is how we interact with others, how we handle situations. And that's all grounded with social emotional development. And how do we support that social emotional development from the day a child is born. Well, how do we do that? There's a lot of ways we can do that. But I wanna really um, bring up one word that will be kind of our word of the week, would you say? And that word is attachment. We need, as adults, as parents, as community leaders, to find opportunities to make strong attachments with children, that we have this kind of bonding time, this interaction time. Um, it's not about buying children the newest toy. The way that we can show value and support our children is by making time to have these interactions, these meaningful interactions. An example of a meaningful interaction is by sitting down curled up with the book and making those memories. We want to make strong attachments with our children. A lot of um, mental illnesses um, are, can be tied down to, can be connected to um, people that don't have strong attachments or do not have strong attachments during their first five years of life. Harvard University says that for any child to be successful, they need to have at least one strong attachment with one adult. Having one connection, meaningful connection, positive relationship, and that's the connection I'm gonna make, is attachment is having that strong relationship um, with others. I want you to pause really quick and think about this. Who is that one person that you have strong attachment with? who you can say, man, that person really loves me and cares for me, supports me, is always there for me. Through the ups and downs, I know they're there for me. That's attachment. That's a relationship. That's the bonding. And what we need to do is to create that bonding experience, make that bonding time to create that strong attachment from the day children are born. And we do that with our time. We do that with supporting our children's understanding of the world and how to make connections and that feelings are okay. A hundred percent, the different feelings that we feel are okay. It's how we express those feelings that we need to learn. So I really want you to have some fun this week. Um, after... The I love it when I read to my poppy video, which is all about early literacy. Um, I have some videos that are in order for you. Um, the first one is, what is social emotional development? Um, the second one then is, 
um, social emotional development, um, strong positive relationships. Um, this video shows how strong relationships develop trust, empathy, compassion, and also a sense of right and wrong um, that is very important to our development. Um, one of the ways that we can do this that connects it to brain development is called the, res the serve and return interaction. Um, it's a great tactic and strategy um, to help support um, strong attachment, but also how this shapes brain circuitry. Um, um, then the next video is attachment. So getting back to our work, the word of the week and why bonding is so important. Um, and then the last video kind of goes into um, the role of attachment um, and then also um, in infancy and then its impact on later mental health. So what I'm trying to do here is say, yes, social emotional development is so important. How we do that is through strong attachment, healthy attachment. And then when we do this, it actually promotes stronger mental health later in our lives. And if we don't do it, what happens then? So I'm trying to make all these connections. One, two, three. To have strong social emotional development, we need to have strong attachment. How do we do that? There's videos that show that. And then this is so important because it supports our overall mental health um, when we become um, adults and all through our journey um, of life. So um, you have some videos there, they're in order. Um, the videos are no longer than five minutes, so this should go kind of quick. Um, they kind of get right to the point, some really fun videos. And I think through the videos, you'll be able to make these connections and, and learn the importance of um, social emotional development. Um, really quick, when you click on the folder, I just wanna kind of show you what's there and the expectations that we have for this week. Um, of course, you have your quiz. That's due on Sunday. Um, I also have um, a great website. It's called the Center on the Social Emotional Foundations of Early Learning called CEPHAL. And a lot of our schools use this pyramid of CEPHAL um, to support children um, that are expressing uh, what we call um, maybe some challenging behaviors. Um, the Office of Head Start also uses this website as well. Here's a great tool. Um, the tool comes with a lot of resources for families and professionals. So I think um, it's very important to, yes, understand the content of social emotional development, but also to have tools and professional websites um, that can help us change um, the behavior and that can give us tools of um, what we can do as adults to um, incorporate this with our interactions to create that strong attachment with our children. Um, and so there is a, a great website for you um, to look at as well. Um, and then you see right under the Cephal, it's called Tools to Help You Choose. Um, this is to actually support you with your discussion this week. And this is the discussion. And there's the reality of our world. Um, so attachment, bonding, positive relationships are important. And, and what we want is that primary caregiver, whoever that parent is, um, to have that really strong relationship, to take time to make that bonding so that we have those strong attachments. So if this is so critical in the first five years in life and all um, through life, Think about this perspective. Imagine that you have a really close friend and that friend has a three-year-old and that friend understands and is trying to learn the importance of attachment. They have a three-year-old and they're considering, hmm, should I have a family member like my mom or my dad, the grandparents, should they provide the childcare to my little one? So they can have that strong attachment, st strong bond, that love, that relationship. Or should I put them in childcare? So the question is, you have a friend, they have a three-year-old, and they're debating if they should have a family member, an example like grandma or grandpa, to take care of the three-year-old. They act as childcare. Or do I put my little one in an actual child daycare setting or preschool. 
These are tough decisions um, that we have to make um, as adults. And so when you're considering this, I want you to be that friend that will give that individual advice um, to say, hey, yes, here's the pros and cons of each. Here's the pros and cons of that child being able to um, be with their grandparents or be with that family member, or here are the pros and cons um, for that little one um, to be in a child day, child care setting or in a preschool. Um, think about all of um, the perspectives of this when it comes to brain development, social emotional development, literacy development, um, what do you think? Is it better for that individual to be with grandma and grandpa or some type of family member or with a trained professional um, to go some, to a childcare setting um, or to a preschool? And not every preschool is high quality out there. Um, and that's why I, I, I gave you that tool right there um, for you in the future or currently um, or your friends and family to have the tools to look for what a high quality preschool is. Um, we need professionals, teachers, educators that know how to make those relationships, those strong attachments. Let me give you an example. Um, my, all my children go to the AWC Learning Lab and um, I know they've been missing school, they've been missing their teachers and that gives me a good sense that they have a strong attachment with those teachers. And the teacher of my four-year-old, Eliana, um, Miss Crystal, she sent a video um, through a, a app that we have. Um, and the video just kind of shared that she misses them. She helps her being um, good leaders and helpers. Um, and that she was going to be giving some assignments for them to do at home. Um, and it was such a loving video. And I remember when I showed, the, this happened just yesterday, when I showed the video um, to Eliana, um, she was so excited. I saw her face lighting up. She wanted to watch it over and over again. And she was expressing to me how much she missed um, being with Miss Crystal, how much she loved Miss Crystal um, and, and her friends as well. Um, and, and what that gives to me is, man, how happy she is. But she is happy at being at that school due to that she has a strong attachment um, with that teacher. And that teacher has taken time um, to have a meaningful and positive relationship. A lot of interactions, intentional interactions have happened um, with her. And so this is your question. It's so important for children to have these high quality interactions that leads to strong attachment that then leads to social emotional development. Um, as a friend, and if you had a friend that had a, a three-year-old, what would you suggest? What were the pros and cons um, that you would give of helping that friend decide whether a family member should take care of that child or putting that child in a childcare setting or preschool? That is your question for the week. Um, I want you to think about everything that you've learned so far this semester and incorporate that into your response, into your discussion um, this week. Please, please, please make sure that you're using APA. Oh, there he goes again, talking about APA. That's right, APA. What APA does, it gives you the opportunity. Yes, I want your opinion. I'm asking for your opinion. What are the pros and cons? But you're gonna back up your opinion with the content in this class, the research, the evidence that's from our textbook, from all the handouts and videos that I'm giving you. And then what you wanna do is connect the two. Connect your opinion and back up your opinion with the research and evidence from our class, from our textbook. And that's what APA does. So you can say, here are the pros and cons, and here are the pros, here are the pros because according to blah, 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 this is what they say. That what is it really allows for a strong discussion. This is the type of work that prepares you for a high quality iSearch paper. So please, yes, your opinion to me is very important. But your opinion, then when you're talking to a friend, becomes that much more reliable and a strong opinion when you're backing it up with research. When you're backing it up with 
why your behaviors have changed and why you're expressing these pros and cons. It's because you learned it from some type of source. And so that's what APA does. It allows you the opportunity to then back up your opinion and do it in a way in writing where you can show all those resources there. So I'm looking forward to reading your content. I'm looking forward to um, reading your questions. Um, that's what you have today. So you have your discussion. Um, you have your quiz. Your discussion is due Friday. Then you need to respond to one of your classmates by Sunday. You have your quiz that is due by Sunday. Once again, open book. Um, everything right out of the textbook there. Um, and then um, one of the things as well um, is please um, take time to um, complete your iSearch draft. Remember, that is now due April 6th, okay? You're going to upload everything to our Blackboard. Um, and then for your observation, you don't have an observation due for a little while. Uh, let me go there as well. Um, please check Blackboard for all due dates. Um, your next observation is not due to April 12th. Um, and just like in the first video before this one I shared with you, um, please look at all the different observations that are there that are available. There are some that are very easy to um, complete with still um, practicing social distancing. Um, so there's a lot out there. If you're having a hard time picking um, an observation, please let me know. Contact me. But your last two observations, you get to choose any observation you want. You just cannot um, pick the same observation that you've done for your first four. So um, think about your observation. Think about the adaptations that you're going to make um, with our current you know, living situation right now. Um, but I am here to help support your ultimate success and to support um, your ability to be successful in this class. So thank you so much um, for everything, for making that smooth transition. I look forward to us continuing our learning journey um, through Blackboard, through these videos. Um, I hope you're finding them very helpful. Um, and remember, once again, you have your discussion that is due Friday, response due by Sunday, and you have your quiz um, on Sunday. And then um, next week um, is spring break, so there will be no content there. Um, I wish you guys a healthy and safe spring break. Um, take care of yourselves, and then we'll reconnect um, to then go into um, our work for the um, next week. And so um, after this week, if you're following along with us in our textbook, um, right now we're on emotion development. And then um, actually when we come back from spring break, we're going to conquer two chapters in one week. There's only two weeks that we do this, but we'll actually be doing um, chapter 11 and 12 um, the next time um, we come together. And, and I'll make those two um, gel really well um, and, and think about how um, those two chapters support our overall child development and, and human growth. So thank you so much. Take care. Be safe. And I look forward to um, reading your discussions. And if you need additional support, please feel free to reach out to me. Take care, ECE 240.